take a look at the entire stain of the cash flow, just a glance what it looks like. So the upper part relates to all the operating activities cash flows. Okay. See I put a red arrow there? We would start from always net income under the indirect method of statement of cash flows. Okay, so we're only looking, we're only going to be going over indirect statement of cash flows um, method. This is actually most popular in the business world. So we would start from net income and then try to tease out the part that is included in net income revenue and expenses, but it's not cash revenue, not cash expenses. Okay, remember, this all goes back to accrual accounting earlier in Chapter 3 when we talked about whenever a company provides services, once they performed it, even though they did not collect cash, we still record it as sales revenue, right, or service revenue. So some part of the revenue in that $40,000 net income is actually not cash collected yet, right? It could be accounts receivables. Okay, another example, so some of the expenses, remember sometimes we have utility payable or salary payable, but at the same time we still record salary expense, utility expense. So in that $40,000 there, there are some of the expenses that has been subtracted, but really it's not a cash expense. Okay, so if we start from net income, it's easier because the majority part of cash increase, cash outflow is already included there, but we still want to tease out some part that has nothing to do with um, cash increase and cash decrease, specifically the parts on accounts. Okay, sales on account, purchase assets on account, anything that relates to accounts receivables, accounts payables will need to be excluded from that $40,000. Okay, so we're going to go into examples later. I just want to show you how it, what an entire statement of cash flow looks like. So the middle part, we have investing activities, any cash that company used to purchase long-term asset, any cash that they received from selling long-term asset goes into the middle section. Now financing activities, everything that relates to long-term liability could be collecting, um, paying off long-term notes payable or borrowing money from signing off long-term notes. It could be issuing stock or buying back stock. Any cash increase, cash decrease goes into the third section. So if we just look at the right column there, the net effect for all three categories, we have operating activities, the subtotal there is $70,000. Middle part, investing activities, you see a bracket, 260000 That basically means the net cash effect for anything that relates to long-term asset purchase or selling, we lost cash, 260000 Okay, the first 70000 operating activities, anything that relates to daily operations, revenue expenses, we gained cash, 70000 Investing, overall, we lost cash, 260000 in terms of anything that relates to long-term asset purchase or selling. And this part here, long-term liability and equity, we gained cash overall by adding all the long-term liability equity activities. We gained 170000 in investing activities. So if we add three, those three numbers up, 70000 plus 170000 minus 260000 Overall, this will tell you the cash effect is minus $20,000. Meaning that if we compare last year's cash balance with this year's balance sheet, you'll figure out this year's balance sheet cash balance reduced $20,000 compared to last year's. Okay, so overall this year's cash balance is $22,000. We got this from the net cash effect plus anything that you got at the end of last year. Add them up, that will give you this year's cash balance. And this should equal balance sheet asset category cash balance. Okay, again, the whole purpose of this is to understand, if we look at last year's balance sheet, you will see cash balance $42,000. It tells you here it's December 31st, 2013's cash balance. If we look at this year's cash balance, assuming this year is 2014, you will find $22,000. So the difference is here, the minus 20,000, we actually already know this by comparing last year's balance sheet and this year's balance sheet. Throughout this entire statement, we want to know why is there a minus 20,000 here? And we break that down into three categories, into operating cash flow, investing cash flow, and financing cash flow. 
Okay, so this is the whole purpose of the entire statement is to understand why is there are differences between last year's cash balance and this year's, the minus 20,000. It comes from these three activities. So for the most part, we lost a lot of the cash by purchasing long-term asset. If you look at the bracket 260 there, if you look at this entire middle section, acquisition of plan asset, we spent $310,000. That's a significant amount of cash loss compared to other activities. Right? Other operating, we gained 70,000. Equity, we did pretty well because we gained 170,000. There's a lot of cash here. Okay, so this entire statement will tell us specifically which area in the business the company has been using a lot of cash, which area they have actually gained a lot of cash inflow. Questions? Okay, let's take a look at how do we do the first section here. 